I'm going to be introducing the project for ITE 170, which is a comprehensive project where you are creating a website, a seven-page website, that is broken up over four phases. In the first phase, you'll be developing a web proposal. The second phase, you'll be developing graphics for the website. The third phase, you'll actually be creating the website using web authoring software. And in the fourth phase, you'll be creating an animation and incorporating that, an incorporating that animation into your site. I want to start out by looking at some screen captures of previous website submissions. If you go to my own page and select Teaching and then ITE 170, we're going to find a little bit of a hidden link here. This is called an image map where I've designated a hotspot within this image. I'm going to go ahead and click anywhere on the purple bar for 170 and I'm brought to a page that discusses or displays uh, past student websites. I've gone ahead and opened a few that we're going to look at. You can certainly look through all of them um, but I just opened a few that I thought would be particularly interesting for our discussion. Now, when you are looking through these, uh, you want to think about what's possible as far as, as your website. And that's why we're looking at them, to sort of see what it is that's possible for us to create as we develop our proposal. I didn't want to actually look at the sites themselves, because I think that would be distracting right now. just wanted to look at the screen captures and just sort of get some uh, overall ideas of layout and content. So this student's created a one column page. This is the header at the top with navigation underneath. This student also included keyboard shortcuts, which is something that we'll discuss towards the end of the semester. And this student also incorporated a Twitter feed, which is also something we'll discuss uh, later on. Here's another view of this page, just to give you an idea of some of the other content. And a third view. On this particular page, uh, the students incorporated a specific type of content management that's allowed us to view a lot of content in a small amount of space. I could select any of these questions and open up a window like this with a particular answer. And in addition to the questions that are listed here, could also change topics to another slew of questions. This allows us to display a lot of content in a small amount of space, as I had mentioned before. The huge benefit to this is to remove a lot of the horizontal scrolling. This is an entry page. An entry page is a page that, uh, that the user sees first, before the home page. Uh, and it's Typically, this involves some sort of animation or video. Here's the one of the pages that this would lead to. I believe this was the lessons link. You can see that other content management allowing us to switch to different topics. We also see here that this is now a, a two-column page. We see navigation on the left and then the main content area. Oops, sorry about that. I thought I had something open here. Uh, here's another student's page that gives a visual indicator as far as what particular page of the site we are on. So more pages from the same site, again with that visual indicator. This, like the first page we looked at, is a one-column layout with... Um, navigation at both the top and bottom of the page. Here's another one column layout with that top navigation. And I wanted to look at this one in particular because it's a little bit non-traditional, but still we see the banner, the logo, navigation, footer, and background information. This student had actually been creating a entry pager. Uh, this was sort of the, the beginning of entering an online dictionary. 
So actually one more page I want to show you while I'm thinking about it, just so we see a little bit of a different layout, which is this site gives us a three column layout where I see the navigation as well as a third sidebar with advertisements. Okay, so let's navigate over to Blackboard. And there is a new project tab on Blackboard. This project tab is where we'll find most of the material for the project, as well as where we will submit a lot of items. There's this project journal. Phase one and phase two of the project are entirely submitted through this online journal on Blackboard. And then phase three and phase four are partially submitted in the journal. But that's something that we can certainly talk about when we get to those components. I'm going to look at this portion, the project overview, first. I urge you to look at this in your own free time as well, so you have time to read through the sheet. But it gives you an overview of the four phases. The website proposal, graphics, the web development through a web authoring software, and our animation that we will incorporate into the existing site. I really do encourage you to open this file up and read through it as you have time. You'll also see the grade distribution and note that the project itself is 25% of your overall grade. I'm going to start discussing phase one right now. If we look at the schedule tab, you will see I've made some adjustments given the situation, but phase one, I've not changed the due date. This is due on February 10th. I have changed the discussion of our proposal to today. It was originally on the 29th. So let's take a look at the first link here, the instructions for phase one. I have the Phase 1 instructions document open now. Note at the top that the website that you create needs to be for a business or a nonprofit organization. This doesn't need to be a business that actually exists. It could be something that you have in your mind, uh, a business that you want to open in the future. It could be a made up business, or you could recreate an existing uh, website, although obviously you would make substantial changes if you wanted to you know, do something like be the next Starbucks or whatever, you would create a new logo and, and unique content. But it should be a business organization as opposed to a personal website. If you have questions about that, we can certainly talk um, individually. There's a lot of ways to turn personal topics into business-oriented websites. Maybe you have a favorite musician you could turn your website into a fan club where you sold t-shirts and um, sent out a newsletter or whatnot or updated um, members as to concert dates. So here are the questions that you're going to answer for your proposal. First you're going to tell me the URL for your website. This URL is on the Nova student server. Uh, later on, if you look at the schedule, when we talk about student web space here on February 3rd, I will explain to you how to determine your individual URL for the Nova student web space. Second, you're going to place your name. Third is a title for the site. Notice that this is a working title. It is okay if you decide to change your mind later on. Next, you will tell me the purpose of your website. Maybe your website is for a nonprofit and you want to educate individuals on a particular cause. Maybe your website is a store or commercial education and you want to persuade individuals into buying your product. Next, you're going to talk about the elements of your page. Uh, the logo, color scheme, pictures, fonts, uh, 
items that are going to be incorporated into your site. So you'll tell me some ideas you have for your logo, ideas you have for the content of your animation, the font you intend to use, uh, pictures, where you're going to get them or what you plan to create, as well as the color scheme for your website. Now you might wonder, where can I even start with this whole idea of a color scheme? If you return back to the Phase 1 Resources tab, you'll see a link to the Color Scheme Designer. And this page will allow you, oh, it's, it's one of the pages that can allow you to choose a color scheme for your page. You simply choose the number of colors, two, three, four. Uh, let's go ahead with two because that's quite common. And you can find colors that contain similar uh, saturations. Generally, and I know we haven't talked about color yet, but generally colors that are equidistant on the color wheel tend to look good together. This is something we'll discuss more with the, the color section. But for the phase one proposal, I do expect you to tell me the actual color codes for your site. Let's say we had chosen these. If you hover over them, you will actually get the color codes. If you see that uh, 0B61A4 on the tooltip there when we hovered over the color, you would actually include these specific color codes in your Phase 1 proposal. The next section asks you to talk about the web content. I expect you to list every page that you plan to include on your site, as well as a brief description of what is on each page. I do uh, definitely expect you to discuss every single page. Um, a lot of students don't include enough information here. They simply list the names of the pages or don't have seven pages or just write, you know, I'm going to have seven pages and not even discuss their, their titles, let alone the content on them. You know, a lot of the purpose of the web proposal is for me to give you feedback about what you're planning to do early on before you've already made uh, those commitments and it might be too late to make changes or more difficult to make changes. The next thing you will discuss is your target audience. Are you developing a website for children or adults or parents of children or individuals interested in a certain genre of music? Uh, the next thing you will do is find three competitors for your business. Uh, you will state their URLs as well as discuss the strengths and weaknesses of those particular competitors. They don't have to be direct competitors if you're doing something a little bit more uh, unique. Next, you're going to discuss any other considerations. Maybe you're developing a website for an automotive dealership and you're concerned that all these high-resolution images are going to take a long time to download. That would be something you would discuss in this design considerations portion. You will draw a site map, which we're going to look at in a little while. It is a hierarchical chart that shows uh, the topics of the page as well as how they link together. And finally, you'll be drawing wireframe diagrams. A wireframe diagram will help us determine the layout of the page. I'm going to talk about this FTP requirement when we discuss the uh, student web space on February 3rd. This rubric it helps you to determine how much each question is worth. So with this information, you can uh, realize that, oh, you know, these are probably short questions. Main design elements, 10 points. That's probably some uh, place where I want to pay a lot of attention to you know, how much detail I'm giving to the content. This is a sample of your proposal. And then I have a sample sitemap. 
I'm going to go ahead and decrease the magnification so we can look at this a little better. This page has a level zero. The home page, or possibly an entry page if there was one here, would be our only level zero pages. The level one pages are here. These are pages that are linked to from the level zero page. And then here there is a single level two page. You need to draw a diagram of one page in each level. So in this case, I would be drawing a wireframe of my home page because that is my only level zero page and I have to pick one from the level zero category to draw the wireframe of. Then I'm going to draw a wireframe diagram of one of my level one pages. Here obviously you can see there's a lot of choices. And then I need to draw a wireframe diagram of one level three page. And there's only one level three page to choose from. so. Obviously, this is the one that I'm going to be drawing my wireframe diagram of. Here is an example wireframe diagram. This is showing us the layout of the website. This is not a place to use color or to show me actual images or even to get too much into the actual content. If it's easy for you to come to right off the top of your head, sure, go ahead and include the content but it's fine to not do that as well, to just say heading or whatever. Uh, you're really giving me a sense of the layout in these wireframe diagrams. So we'll go ahead and look through these examples. I believe this is actually the last one. You have some assistance in creating your phase one proposal because there is a template available in Microsoft Word. So rather than having to retype all of your information, you could use the template and just type in the areas that are asking for your response. And when you get to the sitemap, you could simply edit it. This sitemap was created with SmartArt. If I simply click on the sitemap and access the drop-down menu, I'll see that this is where I could start writing content. Maybe I have pages here for staff and volunteers for my level two Maybe there is no level two page after that, so I might want to delete it. Um, I'm just making up pages here. Obviously, you would put some more thought into this, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the types of pages we might have on our site. So I actually do have seven pages now. So that could be it. I'm certainly I'm welcome to create more, but I have the required seven. So my site map could be uh, this simple. You don't have to use this template. You don't have to use SmartArt to draw your site map, but your site map should clearly indicate the level zero, level one, and level two pages. And then your wireframes could easily be pasted in here. I will go ahead and talk about that again in a minute. Let's go back to this Phase 1 Resources tab. I want to look at these documents. These are past answers from students who have done very well on the website proposal phase of the project. So I would encourage you to look through these and get an idea of the level of detail, particularly things like main design elements, where a lot of students fall short here, giving me those specific hex color codes, giving me your specific font, discussing ideas for your logo or ideas for your animation. 
in the web content section discussing each page as well as a description of the content on each. Looking at the competition, showing their URL and describing benefits and downsides to their websites. So I would look through these, another site map and some wireframe diagrams. I have three model answers from past students for you to look through. Notice all of these wireframe diagrams are black and white. They're showing us layout, not necessarily content. So these model answers are all under the Phase 1 Resources tab at the bottom of the tab, and I do encourage you to look through all of these documents to get an idea of the level of content that I'm expecting in your web proposal. Let's discuss the site map a little bit. This is just a diagram that brings us to the idea of a site map. The site map shows us the level of the pages as well as the pages that link from a particular page. This is called a parent page and the subsequent child pages are, are pages that are linked to from the parent. It helps you later on when you're actually developing your page. I know in some ways with just seven pages it seems a little silly, but it is very helpful in real life to develop a site map to organize the layout of your page. Now I want to talk about the wireframe. And before we do that, we should talk about some design considerations for your page. I have linked to the web style guide here. The Web Style Guide is a book uh, that is also available entire in its entirety online uh, for free. It is a book that really discusses the design aspects of websites. And I know that we have a day in the schedule um, before the Phase 1 due date when we're going to start talking about effective design for websites. But as you're pulling your proposal together, it is important to take a look at this. And there's a few things that I want to highlight from the web style guide that would be very useful for your proposal. Since we are getting close to 25 minutes on the video here, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video and start a second video where we pick up with the web style guide.